One great way of ensuring that you always have a full pantry is to learn how to do canning yourself at home. In this video, we're gonna learn how to take pumpkin and turn it into canned pumpkin in a reused jar. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis And in this video we're going to be canning pumpkin In these old reused salsa jars. Before we get going, I want to let you guys know that there are a lot of different perspectives all over the world about what is the appropriate way of doing canning from different times, uh, you know, that are used for doing the canning, uh, different temperatures that are used, whether or not it's appropriate to reuse these old jars. There are a lot of different perspectives. The way that I do it works for me. I've never had any kind of a problem with it. Uh, but one thing that I do uh, do as an insurance policy is that whenever I do can things, I always cook them when they come out of the can later on, uh, just as a final fail -safe in case there was any kind of a, an issue you know with the canning and uh, and if the lids haven't popped yet uh, that is one bit of insurance for me but other than that I've never had a problem and I just want to relay that to you guys just so you know there are different perspectives on this and some people would criticize this some people would say that I'm too cavalier about it some people would say I'm too uptight about it lots of different perspectives but let's just uh, jump right into the process the first step in canning pumpkin is to take a pumpkin uh, clean it out get all the seeds out of it and all the like stringy stuff out of there chop this up in into uh, chunks and then I put it uh, all the chunks into this pot here uh, you can see a couple of the ones that have been cooked already I put this over the uh, wood stove and just let it cook for a while there's no specific time for cooking it I just uh, kept them cooking until I could take a fork and stick it into the pumpkin it was nice and soft uh, for me to be able to work with the next step in the process is to take the stuff off the stove drain out the extra water when you do put them in I put a little bit of water in there to start just to get them steaming but then they start dripping out their own water and then they kind of create their own uh, moisture environment but you, you do want to put a little bit of water in there just to get them going. Once they are done, I drain whatever water is in here and I start them uh, being allowed to cool. Um, I don't want them to cool all the way though because I want to start putting them into the containers when they are still kind of warm because I'm going to jump right into the, the canning phase as well and you don't want things to you know cool down just to have to heat them up again. So I've got one of these jars. Uh, what I do with these is just regular soap and water, no, no kind of special cleaning. Some people get really like uptight about like you know uh, the seal up here and you know making sure that you like steam it and everything I've never needed to do anything like that I just make sure that there's you know there's no debris I just clean it like you would clean anything uh, you know I give it a little visual inspection I find that these uh, lids are reusable at least two or three times it, it kind of depends on the lid I find that these uh, salsa lids uh, tend to be more reusable than the ones that I the smaller ones that I get on pasta sauce jars uh, but uh, you know each time you have to just kind of look and make sure that the gasket's still in in good condition and again we're gonna be taking this stuff and it's gonna get uh, you know cooked after the fact so even if we have any kind of an issue five or ten minutes of a rolling boil uh, you know after you take this stuff out of canning you know months and months from now uh, if there is any botulism toxin that will destroy the botulism toxin in there so anyway we got our jar we got our lid I'm gonna set the lid off to the side I like to use a funnel here that sets right in like that and uh, then I'm just going to take one of these pieces of pumpkin and the grain of the pumpkin runs in this direction that's where the, all the ribs are so we're going to go perpendicular across that and cut out these little chunks and I'm just going to ride the spoon along the edge there I don't want to be getting the skin in there and I'm going to pull out this chunk and that goes in and we're just going to push it down in there and then we'll get another one there we go and they are hot but just just try to be careful with your fingers this area here we're gonna come back for that we're letting that cool a little bit once it cools it's easier to touch with your fingers but we're just getting the the big chunks here and pushing them all down in there trying to make it so there's as little air bubbles as possible again just because it wastes space and uh, prevents the uh, heating from being as efficient as possible. There we go. We're starting to get to the top there. Well, I'm going to leave maybe about a, a centimeter and change at the top of uh, what's called uh, head space in there. That's the, uh, the air space at the top. Okay, just pushing them in and checking. I can still add some more. 
So we'll get some more. There we go. All right, I'm gonna set this down here to keep this all clean. And that is an okay amount of head space there. So I'm just gonna take my lid, put it on. So we screw the lid on there and then that goes right into the pot with everything else. I've already got some water in there and I should mention that if you are gonna use these types of jars, it's a good idea to pre-warm them before you put the hot materials in them. I take mine and I just leave them next to or over the wood stove, a little not directly on the wood stove, but just over it so that the glass can warm up. And the danger of not doing that is that if you were to uh, put really, really hot material into a cold glass jar, it can crack the glass. Uh, so that is one of the downsides of using these reused ones is you don't want to shock the glass as much, which just means that you need to, uh, if you're going to be putting warm things in, you want to uh, warm them up a little ahead of time. I've got some warm water in here already, and I'm going to add a little bit more. I've got some in this thermos here. And uh, the amount of water that I put in here is usually just a couple of inches at the bottom. For pumpkin, it's recommended uh, somewhere around 90 minutes for canning, but I'll oftentimes just do it extra just as additional insurance. I don't feel like there's any downside of doing extra heating, especially when I'm doing it on my wood stove and uh, the energy is essentially free anyway. We're gonna put the lid down here. This is uh, a All-American uh, pressure cooker. I've had this for a number of years. These are uh, kind of on the pricey side, but they, they work really well. They're very safe. Uh, they're super, super sturdy. Uh, this is the kind of thing you hand it down generation to generation. I'll put a link down in the description below to this particular one that I use, but any kind of pressure cooker is gonna get you there. It's just these, these aren't really big. You can fit a lot in, in these. They're really easy to use. They're well-made, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the idea is you wanna get this stuff up to pressure because the higher uh, the pressure environment where these things are boiling, the higher the boiling point of the water is going to be. Uh, and conversely, if you were to put these in a vacuum, you can make the boiling point of water even lower uh, than and it, it normally is at sea level here on Earth. It's uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the boiling point of water. But if you go up uh, higher in elevation, uh, like up into the mountains, the boiling point of water is actually lower. It's a lower temperature. Uh, so your, the water starts boiling at a lower temperature. And what we're, what we're trying to do here in order to get the contents of this to be 250 degrees, we need to get this up to 15 PSI above the ambient pressure where we are right now. So that's the whole idea of a pressure cooker. It's pretty simple. All you're trying to do is get uh, the pressure environment higher so that the boiling point of the water can go up. We're gonna hook this around and the way that you uh, put these uh, lids on is you want it to have a the similar gap all the way around. So what I do is I just get right down next to it and I look and I just make sure that the gap on this side is same as the gap on that side and I bring these little uh, uh, locks over like that and I'm gonna do the same here and here this side looks like it's up a little bit. So I'm gonna use a, uh, sometimes just use a piece of silverware to just kind of lever it over. And the point of this is just try to make it so that the lid is on nice and uh, nice and straight. I'm noticing this side is a little narrower than the gap over here. So again, gonna bring it up a little bit, put these down, just finger tighten these things down. like that. And the last thing we need is our weight. The weight for uh, this pressure cooker uh, has three different settings. There's five extra pounds, 10 extra pounds, and 15 extra pounds. Honestly, some foods don't need the uh, higher pressure, but I always just put it on 15 anyway, because I figure, well, why not overkill it a little bit? Uh, so we're gonna be putting this on 15 extra pounds, and we are gonna cook this for at least 90 minutes. Uh, I, again, I usually do it longer than that. I'll oftentimes just double it. I'll do it for three hours, because the wood stove's going anyway. So let's bring it over the wood stove, and we'll uh, get that process going. And there we go. You can see some of the jars that I was pre-warming off on the side over here. I have them just on a little uh, grate to have them separated up. I'm not actually gonna use those at this point, so I'll just get those out of the way, move those. And this is just gonna sit here and get itself up slowly to temperature. One thing with doing this on the wood stove in the back, I always wanna make sure these plastic knobs aren't too close to the uh, the flue in the back where all the uh, hot gases are going up. I don't want that to ever melt. And uh, the only other thing uh, to do if you have this on a wood stove is that you have to kind of balance the uh, 
uh, the temperature of it because uh, you don't want to be running the wood stove too hot because then the uh, contents in here is just gonna really, really boil and you're gonna lose your water too fast. And you also don't want it to be too cold because obviously the purpose of this is to get it up to temperature. So what you wanna do is you wanna uh, wait for it to get up to 250 um, uh, degrees Fahrenheit on here, which is that extra 15 pounds per square inch. Uh, and once it gets there, you want to either kind of cut back the power of your wood stove to kind of uh, keep it at that sort of, um, uh, you know, happy medium so that you're not overboiling it and not getting it too cold. Uh, and uh, if it's difficult to do that, you can always take this and kind of move it to different parts of your wood stove. Or of course, you can just do this on your range at home. Again, I like doing this here because it's free. We're running the wood stove anyway, and I get free canning out of the process. So that's it. I hope you found this uh, helpful. It doesn't have to be all that difficult to do canning at home, uh, especially again, like I mentioned, if you're gonna be a little cavalier about it, and you wanna use some of these recycled glass containers and you don't wanna be you know crazy about cleaning all the lids, uh, like you're some kind of like a, uh, a surgeon going in for surgery. Uh, you know, you can get away with a lot of stuff, especially if on the backside, you know, when I pull these cans out, I mean, who, who just eats like raw, uh, <laughs> like uh, uh, pump, pumpkin out of a can? I mean, not, not, not too many people do that kind of thing, but whatever I tend to can, I always just, when I take it off, like applesauce, for example, that's something that you know, a lot of people would like to eat, cool, uh, cold applesauce, but whenever I have something that I've canned, I always just uh, get it up to a boil after I open up from the can, and that is just that kind of insurance uh, to make sure that it doesn't become a situation where you know something was developing and growing in there and again I've never had a problem with it in fact in my entire history of canning I've only had two jars that uh, went bad where the the little lids on the tops popped up and both of those were actually kind of the, the official canning jars they were both um, uh, ball uh, canning jars so it wasn't even a situation where I was using one of these recycled glass jars but what I, I would say again is just for that added insurance whenever you open up something that you've canned or honestly anything you buy from the store too because stores can have these kind of issues as well if you can just get that contents up to a, a nice rolling boil for like five or ten minutes or so uh, it, if it was just on the cusp of developing botulism and it hadn't quite popped yet you're gonna catch it you're gonna destroy all the toxin that's in there. You won't destroy the spores that are in there, but the spores of botulism aren't what uh, harms people. It is the toxins that are these, uh, the byproduct of the, you know, the botulism organism doing its thing. If you get it to that rolling boil, it's going to destroy those toxins. And even if the botulism's in there, the botulism, botulism itself doesn't hurt you. It's essentially, it's the, it's the poop of the botulism that is really toxic for people. And that's what you need to make sure that you're destroying by doing that five or 10 minute boil. So this is going to sit here for several hours. I'm going to be waiting for that little hiss just kind of keep it right at that temperature watching the temperature gauge and at the end of this I'm gonna have five cans of pumpkin that I didn't have to go to the store and buy that's it thanks for watching hey YouTube preppers here's another video that you might enjoy but before you click on it I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen they help to support the work that I do here over at patreon.com if you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list the links below